Hey everyone, I'm here with an update for Grid Framework, and it's the greatest update so far. So what is it? If we go to Game Object, Create Grid, and now we have hexagonal grids. So just click and we get a Game Object, Hex Grid, usual stuff, lets it play, and there it is, our Hex Grid. Now let's rotate it a little. Oops. Yeah, that's the stuff. And as you can see, it's in 3D and everything. So let's take a closer look. Come on. Yeah. So we have radius, which is the distance from the center to the vertex. We have depth, which is how, how far apart these layers are. So what it does is it consists of these hex patterns which are then stacked on top of each other to form a grid. We have XY grids, we have XZ grids, and of course we have YZ grids. So if you want to make a top-down game, you don't have to adjust your game logic or you don't have to think in XY as up and down, but you can just literally take XZ and have a top-down grid. Now let's get back. And we have usual stuff, size, X, Y, and of course Z. Now let's let's make Z to zero for now. Um, what, what we have also is grid style, so that's the shape. Now if you look at hex grids, we have these regular rows and then every second row is shifted upwards. So if we go to Compact Rectangle, all these shifted ones are cut off. So we have these regular ones, and every second one is shifted upwards, but it's also one, one hex shorter. So, you know, it's, it's really just for appearance. Um, the grid works still the same way. We can also hide individual axes, and most importantly, we have pointy sides and we have flat sides. So obviously flat sides, it works in all dimensions. So if we make a top-down grid, it has flat sides. Now, what can you do with hex grids? which we could do with rectangular grids. Well, basically we can do anything. So let me just create a little sphere. Create a little uh, sphere. Yes, here it is. Now we can use our align panel. Drop the grid. And let's take... Well, let's make the sphere a little, a little bit smaller. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Just so we can see the grid better. Now, yes, now let's turn on auto snapping, and as you can see, it snaps right as with rectangular grids. So, one difference is the coordinate system. So, in rect rectangular grids, let me just create one game object create grid rectangular. So, in rectangular grids, coordinates lie on these vertices. So, this is 0, 0, this is 0, 1, 1, 1, and minus 2, 1, and so on. Now with hex grids, I found that this approach doesn't really make sense. So instead what I did is the faces are where the coordinates lie. So the central face is 0, 0, and then when we go upwards, we get 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, there's 0, 3, and, and so on. But what about the x-axis? Well, in this case, I used the herringbone pattern. So what a herringbone is, it means basically the x-axis, instead of going straight, it goes in a zigzag. So if, here is zero, if we have 0, 0 here, then we have 1, 0 here, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, minus 1, and here we have 2, minus 1. So it always goes in a zigzag pattern. It's all explained in the user manual. Um, I can show you 
Grid Framework User Manual. coordinate system and as you can see we have this herringbone pattern which may look a, a little weird at first but it's really intuitive once you get the hang of it so it's basically a rectangular grid but every second row is shifted upwards so let's create a debug sphere so I can show you some of the other features um, let's turn on what should we find nearest face. Oh, yeah, we can get the grid. There we go. And as you can see, we have all the cool stuff we had in rectangular grids as well. Find nearest vertex. So. Basically, you can do anything you could do previously, and I'm going to show you in a moment what it looks like. But one other thing I want to show first is, again, auto-snapping. If, if, if you turn it on, it basically runs a line selected for the selected object. Now, what happens if our object is larger than one? Larger than one hex. Let's duplicate our sphere. And line. So I'm going to make this sphere a parent of this one, a child of this one. And now I'm going to turn auto snapping on. And now they are moved together. So I've looked at several grid based games that use hex grids and what I've always found is they have a pivot point and it's only that pivot point that gets adjusted to the grid while the rest just follows along. So in this case the parent sphere, so this one, is our pivot point, and it's the one that gets adjusted to the grid, while this sphere, as a child, is just drag along. Again, it may look kind of weird at first, but trust me, it really works the best way, and it's also what other games use. So, you know, if I took a cube, create other cube, and then try to force this one into a grid, into a hex, it just doesn't make sense because the shape, it, it just doesn't match. So I tried different things it, and it just felt counterintuitive. So let's look at some of my examples. Um, movement. And don't save. Now in previously we had this, this sphere and it was roaming the grid randomly. Now I made another sphere and it used the exact same script, no changes, nothing. And the reason it works is because we have rectangular grids and hexagonal grids and they inherit both from the same class. So if I show it to you in a second. So yes, we have rectangular grids and hexagonal grids and they both inherit from this GF grid class. Now if we take a look here, we see, if I remove it, it says GF grid, not GF rec grid or GF hex grid, but GF grid. So we can put in any grid framework grid and it will automatically work. So let's put it back. Yeah, come on. Hit play. And it works. Come on, do something interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at, an, at, an, at another example. Okay, in this example I have three plain text files, just simple text, and these are used to create a breakout field. So in rectangular grids it just fills, fills these with blocks, and in this case it fills, it fills these hexes with spheres. So I have these prefabs, I have my level files, and let's hit play. And if you click another level, it picks another level. Now if you take a closer look, you can see these are the exact same levels. Red, green, blue, green, blue, red, green, blue, green, blue. Red, blue, green, 
red, blue, green. So it's the exact same <coughs> it's the exact same level file, but the grid, the script to be more precise, which is again the same script, automatic, automatically takes in the type of grid, recognizes it, and then makes the adjustment. If we take a look at our script, I showed how to write this in a previous tutorial. And if we take a look, um, the only change really that happened is the positioning of these blocks. In this case, we have to shift them half a unit to the right and half a unit to the, to the bottom because in rectangular grids the coordinates lie on vertices, but we want faces. In this case, we already have the faces, so we don't want to shift them. Now, how can you do this automatically? Well, if you go in the awake function, we have this variable shift, which is here added. So in, the, in case of hex grid, we don't want to add anything, and in case of rectangular grids, we want to add half a unit. So we have simple if type get type is gf rec grid, then we add 0 0.5, and else we add 0. Another example, which is more impressive, is one was it? Yeah, lights off. So again, I've shown how to make this game. So it's a simple puzzle game. You click a light, and then it flips its colors, and all adjacent ones flip their color as well. Now the tricky part is there is no such thing as diagonal in hex grids. Here we have diagonal, and we don't want them. Now in hex grids, there is no such such thing which is what's cool about hex grids. We, every adjacent grid, at every adjacent field is just one unit away. So we need an entire, entirely different game logic to, do, to pull this off. And again, we don't need two scripts to do, the same, to do slightly similar jobs. Instead what we do is we have the same script attached to all these lights. And then we call a method. Uh, where is it? Just a moment. Yeah, here. So we have this script which gets applied to all the lights and this one calls a function which then picks its impl implementation depending on the grid type. So if we take a quick look, I'll do a separate video tutorial on how to extend grid framework for your own extension methods, but for now this is basically all where the magic happens. If we take a look at here, we call the grid dot is adjacent. Is adjacent is not a method of grid framework. It's a method I've added without changing the source code of grid framework itself. And I've added it in a separate file. So as you can see it again does it compares type and then calls the appropriate function. So you can have one script for each grid type and it does and it picks its implementation automatically, requiring you to do little to no code change to your existing code. I was able to code this in less than an afternoon just by extending what already was there. So that's it for my short introduction to hexagonal grids and grid framework. If you want to know more about grid framework, feel free to visit my blog, watch my other videos or just drop me a line. Thanks for your attention, goodbye.